course, this all comes amidst reports that Sir Jim Ratcliffe is very close to sealing his £1.3 billion deal for 25% of the club. There was an expectation that perhaps uh, his 25% stake would have been finalised by now. So might it be in the next week, in the next 10 days? So we thought, we'll try and get an update on this from the man in the know, Times Radio's Dominic O'Connell. And I said to Dominic just a few moments ago, what was he hearing on this front? Well, I'm hearing nothing at all. And, and I think um, there's almost no expectation in the business community, but there is a lot of expectation in the football community uh, because Ratcliffe, uh, Ineos is a private company. There's, it doesn't have to communicate with the stock market. It has to communicate, in a sense, with its lenders, the, the people who bought bonds, IOUs that are issues to raise money. But they don't really have to talk about what the founders of the company plan to do with their money because, in a sense, what Ratcliffe does is what Ineos does. But this will be Ratcliffe Steele and his uh, and, and the other two founders of Ineos. So it won't be uh, a part of Ineos's mainstream business. You still expect it to happen, though, Dominic, although it's not going to be trumpeted from the rooftops? Well, it will be Trump. It will definitely be trumpeted when it happens. I, I'm just saying that really, there's not much guidance out there as to when it will happen, and it has been this week for what a year and a half now, more. So I don't. So you know, when it happens, it will happen. I don't have any particular expectation it will happen this week. But I mean, to be fair, some of the some of the other reporters who've been following this and have been right on some bits of it are suggesting it will be this week. And I guess the timing is about right. We're in the international break now, aren't we? And there's been quite a lot of build-up and warming up of people as to what the deal might look like. So if it did happen this week, I think that wouldn't be a huge surprise. Uh, when it does happen, Dominic, how impactful is a minority 25% stake? Well, I think that that is the interesting thing. The devil of this deal will be in the detail. So I'll, I'll be looking for, for three things. First of all is, where did the shares come from that Ratcliffe buys? Are they shares that are that are already issued and are in the market? So he will be buying them from shareholders in the Manchester United vehicle, which is listed in New York, and from the Glazers. Or, as I think is much more likely, there'll be new shares of both classes. So there's a, there's a super voting class, which gives whoever holds them more votes than the ordinary class. Well, there'll be new shares issued by the company. So if the company raises money by selling something, if he just buys them from existing shareholders, those shareholders take the money. So I think it's likely that the club will issue new shares, the company will issue new shares, and that will give them the 25%. Then we have to work out what kinds of shares they are and what kind of voting rights they will give him. And the second thing I'm looking for is what is the shareholder agreement between him uh, and the Glazers as to what control he will have over the operations of the club, what is being given to him, and how will that actually be enforced through a shareholder agreement, because that is quite a sticky point. And the third thing is, what's the agreement on the future governance of the club, and does Ratcliffe have, have any kind of option to buy out the remaining equity, to buy out the Glazers in the future, and under what conditions can that happen? But those are the three things that I think will, uh, are the most interesting about this deal. Dom, that third point you touched on, I think, is particularly pertinent to Manchester United fans because uh, there is a feeling, would you agree with me, that a certain number of United fans think Sir Jim is going to be the panacea to all their problems? Well, I'm sure any new owner of a football club, you know, football fans want one thing for their club, which is which is success and playing with style. And I think Ratcliffe, you know, my conversations with him, there are a little while ago now, but when I was talking to him about it, when I was writing this book about it, he is a fan, but he also he's also a businessman. He's not He doesn't want to go into it to lose money over time anyway. I think he accepts that it will require investment in the short term. But he thinks Man U is one of those trophy assets that in 10, 20 years' time will be worth more than he's paid for it. He's not going into it to lose money. So I don't think it's just going to be a, a blank checkbook or anything like that. And and also, I, I think it's worth pointing out that his, his efforts in sport have not been unalloyed successes. You know, his ownership of Nice hasn't been absolutely fantastic. The Ineos cycling team is now slightly on hard times. So, you know, his ownership is an unknown quantity. I, don't, I think it would be wrong to, to expect him to come in and solve all of United's problems overnight. That was Dominic O'Connell, Times yeah. Radio. Simon, I have to say, um, even though Dominic is extremely well informed uh, on such matters, um, everything he said, you were either concurring with or you told me during that interview 
off mic, if you like, a few seconds before. You're absolutely on the same page as this fella. Mm. And and you were in agreement with him that even at the 25% that Sir Jim is going to get, it was never going to be a panacea for all the fans' problems. No, no, of course it wasn't going to be. And the, the, the disconnect between myself and Dominic is that the, the Radcliffe conversation hasn't been going on for a year and a half. They got the idea that United put themselves up for sale this time last year or, or put the rain group in to start to see if they could exploit a marketplace was a year ago and Radcliffe came in during this process. So it's not a year and a half that this has been going on week on, week out, week in, week out. The shareholders' agreement, of course, will reflect who's got what control and who doesn't doesn't have control. I, I don't think it will just be a new share issue because what would be the purpose of the Glazers allowing themselves to be diluted by new shares being issued without any financial gain uh, unless... They're going to use the money that um, Radcliffe puts in for a whole raft of improvements in United, which is going to increase their shareholding value, which might mean new stadiums. It might mean other things. It'd be fascinating to understand how um, um, Radcliffe is putting his money in. Um, is it Radcliffe's cash? Is he borrowing against the shares rather than what the Glazers did, which was borrow against the football club? I don't know that. And it's really interesting to work out the idea that somehow Jim Radcliffe with all due respect to this remarkable man and his remarkable successes in business, there is the thing called the Ineos curse about businesses that are in sport that he's been involved in, whether it's uh, the Sky Cycling team, whether it's the decline in the All Blacks when he invested in the All Blacks as a, as a commercial proposition, whether it was Ben Ainsley and the, the one of the worst performances in the America's Cup, whether it's his investments in Nice and Lausanne that have produced no particular outcome. So if you actually look... At what he's done in sport, every time Ineos has gone anywhere near anything, it's actually gone the other way. It's not been this huge, resounding, compelling. That one absolutely fill United fans with well, confidence this morning. Well, they don't care I mean, because it's, I mean, a, it's, he, it's ABG, isn't it? it? Anybody but the Glazers. Well, so it doesn't matter to them, does it? Radcliffe sees them as Dominic was saying. There's a trophy asset. I mean, well, does he's that in, tell us where his mindset. Well, he's is? envisaging. I've always said that this is not a Daddy Warbucks play. This is, this is not some philanthropic exercise where he can't wait to benefit Man United fans with this wonderful glory of a wonderful winning football team solely for their benefits. Of course, when you get into these levels of wealth, there were exceptions. There were people like Roman Abramovich that had very different agendas, and there will be exceptions like the Man City ownership. But this is a commercial man that has an emotional index. But by the way, he had an emotional index to Chelsea. He had an emotional index for the well-being of sports. He wanted to buy Chelsea. Mm. He's had emotional indexes on lots... Of, he had an emotional index to Barcelona. He wanted to get involved with buying Barcelona. Yeah, yeah. So this is a man that trots out these tropes about the necessity to add value to the, to the, the, the wonderful sport that is football. And his most recent one is he's aligned with Man United. Interestingly for you, you'll have noticed Crystal Palace's sporting director, Dougie Friedman, yes. has been linked with a role in the United boardroom just in recent days. Can you see that happening? Well, Dougie is a very bright fella and, and produced a wonderful football team for Palace that got them promoted in 2013, fell, up, fell out with Palace, moved on to Bolton or had a disagreement, which Holloway picked up the remnants of his team and got them promoted with. He's done a sterling job as a director of football. He's a very canny commercial operator. Is he best in class? I, I think he's very good. I think he's very good. And I think he's, you are as good as a director of football as you're allowed to be the, by the people that you work with. Yeah. Given the fact that I think Parrish is not particularly great, I'm not going to be the most complimentary about the opportunities for Dougie Friedman to have flourished, but I actually think a lot of what's been done at Palace, a lot of the okay. recruitment and a lot of the decisions over the years, in most recent times, Dougie Friedman is a very, very capable operator. Jim White and Simon Jordan. Monday to Friday mornings from 10 on AM, on DAB, via the TalkSport app and on your smart speaker. TalkSport.